What is up guys? It is Styx here and today I'm going to be going over another great warlock build. This one is going to be specifically for PvP and it is going to be focusing on what I think is the best possible setup for a warlock in PvP and potentially any character in PvP for an all-rounder playstyle. This is potentially the best defensive, aggressive, and in general just powerful build it has been for quite some time and i think that won't really go away at least for a long time there are other things that are going to come up and be potentially strong but me personally i think this is the best thing around at least in my hands starting with the subclass i'm going to be going with the shade binder stasis warlock you can't change the super but the rift i'm going to go empowering rift this is because it has a slightly faster animation you'll find out why that's important soon i will be going with burst glide for the boost of speed we're using penumbral blast it's the only one we have and the glacier grenade this is because the crystals on the glacier grenade are what i'm looking for and most of the time we won't even be using glacier itself the aspects i will be using frost pulse casting your rift generates a shockwave that freezes nearby combatants this is why empowering rift is so important a faster animation means you can get this off more quickly so if you're getting pushed by a shotgunner or something similar then you can use this i have many times used frost pulse to completely shut down roaming supers in competitive pvp and trials People don't expect it, they just walk right into you and they get frozen and they die. So 100% keep this in your back pocket, it's an amazing tool. In addition to that, what's really nice for anti-camp is Bleak Watcher. This is when you press and hold your grenade, it converts your grenade into a stasis turret that fires slowing projectiles, I believe three to four of them at a time, every few seconds. You want to use this to pressure people out of a spot that they are hiding in or you can also use this somewhat defensively by placing it by like a an opening or a door that you know they're going to run through because they don't necessarily know it's right there until it is and then it slows them it becomes a much more disadvantageous situation for them which makes it a more advantageous situation for you i would recommend if you are going to bring this into 6v6 i would say use cold snap and ice flare bolts instead this is because the cold snap grenade is much more useful in 6v6 you're not going to be standing in one spot as much you're going to be wanting to run around and slay and all of that kind of thing so in stuff like iron banner run some cold snap run some ice flare bolts get some mass freezes kill people have fun like that this is for if you're trying to stay alive play your life and be as efficient as possible in dealing with the enemy team in which case the fragments you're going to want to go for are whisper of conduction for the stasis shards tracking to you in addition to the resilience and intellect whisper of durance slow that you apply to targets last longer and for those abilities that linger their duration will also increase plus 10 strength whisper of shards shattering a stasis crystal temporarily boosts your grenade recharge rate shattering additional stasis crystals increases the duration of this benefit this is why we are going with glacier grenade because when we use the glacier grenade standard instead of the turret for our own personal defense we will take less damage from whisper of chains while you are near frozen targets or a friendly stasis crystal you take reduced damage from targets and it adds some recovery and then in addition to that as we break the glacier grenade we will get our grenade back significantly more quickly than someone else might for using their grenade in a similar manner now a lot of these increase stats that is very important on this build i'm going to be running three 100s I'm going to be running 100 resilience for the maximum reduced flinch and for the highest possible shield count in Destiny 2 PvP, which will allow me to survive a lot more than someone else who has a tier 2, tier 3 resilience and does not have Whisper of Chains. 100 recovery to have the maximum rift uptime and the maximum health regeneration speed and 100 discipline because this grenade is going to have a longer cooldown than a lot of other grenades and i'm going to be wanting it as frequently as possible which means i want to have the lowest cooldown as possible your intellect and strength are not very important strength might be the most important after discipline but 100 percent focus on that discipline now as far as my 
armor goes. For the exotic armor piece, I'm going to be running Eye of Another World. This improves the regeneration speed of your grenade, melee, and rift abilities, and provides a small benefit to the airborne effectiveness stat of all weapons. This includes exotics, this includes anything you're using, and it is a very significant bonus. And with the current regeneration rates in the sandbox, this is probably the best exotic for this build. This used to be Ophidian Aspects. However, while it does still stay in the tooltip, I believe that they have removed the melee range increase. And if they have re-added it and I was not paying attention, then this is still 100% a great option. But in the current meta, I could still say that I have another world has an edge on it. Now, for the mods I will be going with, I'm going with double targeting on the helmet, double dexterity on the gloves, double unflinching, and a resistance on the robes. This is because I just had an extra slot, so I threw on stasis resistance. My boots are artifice armor, and I'm going to be running absolution orbs of restoration in innervation, so that I can get as much grenade energy as possible every time I pick up an orb. And on my bond, I'm going to be running distribution double bomber. So every time I use my class ability, I will also be getting another chunk of grenade energy back. Now, if you don't have artifice armor, that's completely fine. You can still get it very easily by doing competitive. I just did my placement matches and I was already at the rank where you need to be to get artifice armor. So it's entirely possible to very quickly get some. I got some, it wasn't a role that was better than any that I already had, so I deleted it, but you could get some and it could be your first piece of artifice armor, or it could be that God role you're looking for. Now, for the weapons, I'm going to be using pretty much any primary hand cannon in the kinetic or energy slot. I am loving right now Hawk Moon and Sojourner's Tail. My Sojourner's Tail has quick draw opening shot. I do believe you can't get it anymore. So for those of you who are worried about that, you could really run any slug shotgun here, something like Ganora's Axe. However, if you are worried that you're not gonna be able to get it on the fun, I assure you, Igneous Hammer and Chaperone is potentially the strongest variation of this, especially if you have a good Igneous Hammer. Mine is more of a stat monster than anything, and as such, I think this is one of my favorite setups to run, because just having a lot of stats makes it really fun to run the weapon. With the current special ammo economy, you're not gonna get a lot of special, unless you are outright slaying out in competitive specifically, but it is still very useful. So that is why I run an exotic primary, so that I can have more usage out of that exotic. My Hawk Moon is opening shot with alloy magazine, small bore, smooth grip. I like the stats on this. I feel like opening shot suits it very well. In addition to the stat increases from increasing my paracausal shot because I have the catalyst. I use e half truths because I enjoy eager edge. And overall, that, that is the build. If you guys enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe. And if you have any requests or anything of that sort, let me know in the comments below.